So I have a chance to talk to you a little bit about the, the way we collect data on human decision making. And what we do, is a number of different things, but all I'll talk about today is the, the serious gaming side of things. Um, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out behaviors that will allow us to slightly change behavior or nudge behavior in a way. And what I mean when I say nudge is, is, is something that's altering um, behavior in a predictable way, uh, but without uh, really forbidding anything from happening. We're not mandating that, that changes have to happen. Uh, some good examples of a nudge would be, we're not banning junk food, but we're putting fruit and vegetables at places that'd be easier for you to grab those compared to the food that's not good for you. Um, so that's kind of what a nudge is. And, and the overall idea here is we're trying to figure out how we can change behavior and how we can measure, measure uh, change and how we can actually uh, develop good messages. One of the ways that we think about developing a good message to allow these nudges is something called the idea model that was developed by uh, some of our colleagues, uh, Tim and Deanna Selnow. Uh, and there's, there's four components to this idea model. Uh, the components are this idea of internalization, uh, and that is how does this actually affect you? You need a message that uh, relays the idea that this is an important thing for you personally. You also have to uh, figure out a good way about getting that person uh, the message, and how do you actually do that? How do you distribute that message? Uh, a third component is this idea of explanation. What is the actual problem? and and what, what's, uh, what's gonna affect. And a fourth thing that is critical is what do we do to uh, react to this? What are the action steps that are available to us? So when we're looking at messages, we're trying to develop messages uh, that will have all of these components. Um, and we're trying to look at different aspects of those messages. So we're trying to figure out ways of looking at data and how people behave that will allow us to inform some of these components. So the way we're doing that is something known as a serious game or a digital field experiment. Um, and what we're doing is we're putting humans into a virtual environment and asking them to make a decision. And we uh, change the treatments in the game to change maybe information um, displayed to the, the players it will allow us to get at number, a number of different things uh, that we're interested in. We also actually pay the people that are playing our games. The better you play, the more money you make. So this performance-based uh, incentives are uh, something that are supposed to actually really uh, improve the data that we're getting. We're testing a number of different things. We're testing some of the components of risk, uh, how uncertainty plays in, uh, what kind of message we're actually uh, using or the distribution of that message um, and things like do the messages all say the same thing or do we get mixed messages where some are saying one thing and some are saying the other and how does that affect your decision making process we're looking at some of these social effects with multiplayer games or different individuals within a, a single game and how they actually interact with each other we're also developing games that look at different cultures and how different cultures might play similar games. And one of the other things that we're doing is something called uh, exemplars. Uh, we use vivid examples that really, really uh, have these powerful messages in them that will really stress that internalization component. Uh, this is actually one of the games that we're actually looking at a bunch of different information. Um, the critical choice here uh, is people have a chance to use, try to get that going, uh, the shower facility, which is up on the, the upper left there with that waterfall, or they can choose to go out the emergency exit. Um, so in, in this case, the individual is collecting a lot of, uh, doing a lot of tasks internally, and then they're going to have a choice as to whether or not, given the information that they're given, uh, they want to try to make extra money by cheating a little and going out the emergency exit, or they want to be really safe and go out the, the, the shower exit. Now, in this case, they are cheating, which takes less time and they can actually make more money, but when they do that, they actually risk their animals getting sick. 
Uh, in this situation, there is a 5% pro probability when they went out that door that their animals could have gotten sick. Uh, in that situation, they would have lost a lot of money. And remember, there's an actual cash that they're walking out the door with. Uh, so there, we're, we're, we're able to judge their decision based on the information they're giving. And we uh, change that uh, information um, by, <clears throat> so we can look at a number of different things here. So we can look at this uh, spectrum of risk, uh, how much risk they're actually uh, uh, going through. And not surprisingly, really, when we increase that risk, we see a lot more people that are going through uh, the shower door, not taking the risk of going through the emergency exit. Um, when the risk is really a minimal, 1% uh, chance, we're seeing most of the people going through that shower door. Um, one of the other things that we looked at in this particular game was how uncertainty plays into their decisions. Uh, when we told them that that risk information was absolutely certain, they actually took more chances than when we actually gave that information but said we weren't absolutely sure that the information we were giving them was correct. And what we see here is that people are uh, what's called uh, uncertainty averse, that they uh, get a little uh, uncertain and they want to take less risks when they are uncertain. Uh, another aspect here is how we actually delivered that information about the infection risk. And if we actually used a number like that 15% on the bottom uh, versus a word like that low versus a threat gauge, they behave very differently. Um, and what we found is that if we want to really get good compliance and have more people using the, the uh, biosecurity, we want to provide that information with a graphical display instead of using a number because people are generally bad at understanding uh, and doing calculations with numbers. Uh, so on the surface, those are all really interesting, but when we actually dive down a little uh, to some of these uh, interaction terms, we see some really dramatic differences. And this is one of them that I really wanted to highlight. When across the board, there's a 5% chance when they leave the, the room uh, through the emergency door that they'll, their animals will get sick. Um, and if we gave them that information with, uh, with certainty and using a number, we see that most of the people actually go out the, the, uh, the emergency exit. I mean, most of those people are down towards the bottom here. But if we gave them the same information, but we, we did it with some uncertainty, and we did it uh, with the, that graphical display, we see almost all the people going out through the shower door. So we see uh, almost a complete reversal of that signal by changing the way we actually present the people with that message. Um, so when we're actually thinking about how to use this, uh, graphical messages work the best, and then words, and then numeric. Uh, we see that when we add uncertainty, that people will uh, or behave uh, more with more risk aversion. They will uh, be less risky. Um, and we also see that, that you know, when there's more risk, they, they behave better. We also have games that look at how information works um, and whether or not we want to tell people about where the disease is in the system or what people are doing to prevent that disease. Um, and I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly here. Uh, but, but there's numerous ways that we're actually doing that. Um, uh, numerous different, uh, like both in-house and we're going online. And Eric's going to have a chance to talk about that a little more. In this situation, we can tell them absolutely nothing about what's going on in their system, not about the disease that's there or what people are doing to prevent it. Or we might tell them everything about what the disease is doing and what people are doing to prevent that disease. This is a system of farms in the area. And disease can be spread uh, in a number of ways, but uh, generally thinking is biosecurity and distance. And what we find, interestingly, is when we tell people about what other people are doing in the system, that's when we actually see those individuals investing the least money in biosecurity. So telling people what's going on with their neighbors and what the other people are doing seems to be detrimental to actually having people invest and use biosecurity. 
Now the exact opposite thing happens when we communicate well with where the disease is in the system. So if we tell everybody where the disease is in the system, that's when they actually invest the most in biosecurity. So this really tells us that the communication of what kind of information we're communicating is critical to getting improved biosecurity in our environments. Uh, and we have a, a, one of the key components is there's, there's people behave differently to different things. We have a distribution of behaviors. Uh, when we see this uh, no threat, we're not telling anybody about where the disease is. Most people are behaving in a risky way and they're not putting much biosecurity in, but some people are. When we shift it to telling people about where the biosecurity or the disease is, sorry, they shift to this generally putting a lot of money into biosecurity. Uh, so that's in general what's happening, but what about the individuals in that system? And uh, this is one of the interesting findings here is most people, when we made that shift from and started telling them about where the disease was, they improved or increased their biosecurity spending. But they, we did see about 20% of the individuals actually decreased their spending in biosecurity. Uh, so not everybody is going to react the exact same way. Um, any of our messages, we're going to see some people behaving in a good way and some people behaving in a different way. And that's an important factor to keep in mind. That individuals are different. Um, so with this, uh, we need to know that disease awareness will increase our investments. Uh, but if we tell people how their neighbors are preparing for diseases, they seem to decrease investment. And we also know that not everybody behaves the same way to a message. Um, so in general, with, with these serious games, there's a lot that goes into them, and we're getting really some nice insights into the decision-making process. Um, and we can use those insights to start informing some of the agent-based models and the simulations. Um, and we also know that there's not going to be one certain message or certain policy or anything that's going to be the silver bullet. It's not going to solve all our problems. We have to look at this in a more holistic way. Um, to actually get to the point where we actually improve biosecurity in the system. 